it's finally time for a new printer. In this video, I'm doing an unboxing and assembly of the Ender 3. Come and join me. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I would like to help you being more successful with 3D printing. So if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing so you don't miss anything. It's finally time to test a new printer and I'm really looking forward to unbox and assemble the Ender 3 to put it to the test and in the following videos comparing it with the Anit A8 in several aspects. So check out the Ender 3 playlist for new videos in the next weeks. So I got this box um, last week. I was a little bit hesitant to open it and I decided to do the unboxing really on the channel uh, instead of just showing you the final results. So let's start with what's in the box. Instructions, sample filament and card reader and an SD card. Power cable, parts of the frame obviously. The heat bed and uh, another huge part of the frame. Wow, this looks huge. Aha, uh -huh. okay, so there's the extruder part. I need a little more space here. Our power supply, 15 amps at 24 volts. So we could expect that this printer heats up faster. Yeah, so this looks like the extruder motor. Yeah, this, is, this looks like the display. Probably that's the set access part that's on the other side. So we can put this away. Actually, I really didn't read anything up front, so I'm really getting the full experience here how this printer is going to be built. And we're going to check out if that manual that they deliver, if that really makes any sense. So let's see. Page one. Uh -huh. So actually I've been waiting for this printer since a few weeks, um, ordered it somewhere in January, so it took a while to arrive for some reason. It got stuck in customs, so every anytime you order something from China, be aware that it might get into the customs and you might have to pay import taxes if you didn't select the right shipping method. So I'm starting with step number one, which means we are assembling the vertical bars which hold the z-axis where the z-axis are is going to slide up and down. So it's for some reason obviously not completely flat, so it's yeah wobbling for some reason. So I'm releasing all of these hex screws and trying to make this frame flat to the surface. Yeah, that feels pretty sturdy and nothing's wobbling anymore. On the first side that looks really sturdy, of course much 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 better than the Enid A8. Uh, let's see if it really can yeah, hold its promise that it's a better printer. And let's do the next step. So the next step is about mounting the display and the power supply. So let's do that. Okay, so here you can see, I mean, this is obviously a, a cheap printer. So the backside of the display is an unprotected PCB board. Uh, what we should definitely do as one of the first prints is probably get a cover for this to make it a little bit more protected against accidentally touching this electronics here on the backside. Uh, from the front it looks fine. So, and it's mounted with just two screws that shouldn't be too complicated. So that was easy. Okay, so power supply is mounted the display is mounted, that was step two. So you're really seeing everything that I'm doing and I'm, I'm failing, I'm failing. So <laughs> let's hope for the best and expect the worst. That looks like an end stop switch here. 
uh, part that has a little end stop switch. And that end stop switch um, is going to be mounted on the left side of the printer. Fact is that this part is not going down further. And I think it's intentionally done with, with this, this little stopper here. And let's hope that this is right. Um, it's not in the manual. Um, they say 32 millimeters of distance should be done for this part um, to the lower end of the frame, but it's actually 35. Okay, so these two screws, they go to the front of this motor, seem to go directly into the frame. Yeah, that was step number four. So we have mounted the motor here on the left side of the printer. So the next part is mounting this that extruder and this part, which seems to be, what is this? This is moving the set axis up and down, yeah. So that's step number five. So this slider is going to be mounted to the other end of this rail. So that's it for step number six. So we have mostly finished our set axis, um, the slider for the extruder. And what we're doing now in the step number seven is preparing the belt that drives this um, extruder to the left and to the right. The belt is going underneath these two underneath the slider um, wheels. You have to put it underneath and then it's going to come out on the left hand side here, going on the lower end and then ending here, being inserted here into this little slot here. And the other end is inserted in this little slot, going here around the motor and then going back on the top side and then going underneath these little wheels here. So basically running full circle. So now we are mounting this um, yeah, counter pulley, which is going into this at the other end here, which is going into this slot here. That looks good. I think I forgot to insert this lead screw. So step number nine seems to be to insert or to put this whole construction on top and then putting it down until it hits the lead screw. And then we have to insert the lead screw here. So the holder for the, for the thread for the lead screw is mounted here on the top. So I'm a little bit releasing that. And then I'm tightening it again, not too tight, they say in the manual. Okay, that looks good. And there's a lot of grease on this whole thing, so I have to clean my hands now. So step number 10, mounting the top rail, which closes the, the whole printer frame. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that looks, that looks already pretty sturdy. I mean, look at this. I mean, it's almost, yeah, it's really, really sturdy. Nothing is really moving. So continuing with step number 11 on the manual, which is uh, the spool holder, spool holder, which is going on top of the printer and it's going to be mounted here. So we are assembling it, it looks pretty simple. Okay, coming to step number 12 now, which is inserting all the cables into the motors, the end stop switches, um, inserting the PTFE tube into the extruder. So I'm going to do that, I'm done. We're pretty much done and um, hope that the printer works.
Okay, fine. So all the cables are mounted. All the plugs are in. Um, I hope we're gonna see some results. I uh, hope the printer actually works and uh, doesn't blow up in my face. <laughs> but let's see. I mean, okay. So let's switch it on. So we have a little bit on. We have a little switch on the side, which is very good. And yeah, looks good. And let's be brave. Let's do an auto home. Let's see what happens. Just curious. I keep my finger on the switch. Okay. Let's see if it hits the Z end stop uh, correctly and if it doesn't crash into the bed. Okay, that sounds good. So that's good. I mean, the printer seems to work. All the motors have been moving. End stop switches seems to work. Yeah, fine. Let's move on. Okay, that concludes the Ender 3 unboxing and assembly video. In the next video, you will experience the calibration process, how to do the first test prints and tune the slicer settings. That's it for today. If you appreciate this video, please smash the like button, consider subscribing to my channel to support me creating new content for you and hit the bell notification icon if you wanna get notified every time I post a new video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.